Hello. Okay. Uh, hi. I'm I'm Dot. Like a dot. Uh, well, yes. I'm. Um, well, first off, thank you very much for having me today. Um, I'm honored to be here, and uh, today I'm going to talk about this quite old project. It's about eight years ago. I'm, I'm very excited to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> I'm a partner and designer at Umbrellium, and um, at Umbrellium, we we believe that uh, we either that community is a citizen, so we, we can achieve greater things if we collaborate or <clears throat> uh, participate with each other. <clears throat> so we're trying to create a tool for the audience or the users or the community to achieve that. <clears throat> and <clears throat> our project, the range of the project has a wide scale. So uh, you just, what you just saw was natural fields, so it's like a domestic product. And this project from last year at the Barbican Digital Revolution is like a G, uh, gallery piece for 20 people at a time. And a little bit bigger, it's a kind of big city scale. People came together to design and assemble and fly this gigantic structure or even web platform for like a few thousand people to use at the same time. Uh, this is a, <clears throat> our pro project called Thingful. It's a search engine for Internet of Things. <clears throat> So uh, eight years ago, I was obsessed with the uh, carbon footprint. It's, it's qu was quite fascinating. Like everything we do as human has a consequence in carbon dioxide. This, and this bad boy is so bad, I don't know. <clears throat> and, and it's so, so difficult to visualize. It's invisible and it's intangible. So I was thinking, like, how do we kind of materialize it a bit? And of course, we know that three growing, it kind of absorbs carbon dioxide and turns that into the mass of the tree. So this picture, that's my hand. And um, <clears throat> it's actually one day of my breathing. I exhale the amount of my carbo carbon dioxide I generated in a day. It takes a tree to generate, to grow that much of biomass to absorb my breathing in a day. But I can't help. I can't stop breathing, can I? So. Let's move on. <clears throat> I was particularly interested in electricity and mind the uh, bad lighting there. So basically, in that, in that box, the pile of uh, dry leaves, is <clears throat> if you want to power a 50-watt light bulb for one hour, the, the tree has to grow that much to absorb the carbon dioxide that was generated from producing the energy. <clears throat> So that is, yeah, that's quite fascinating. So there we go. What about we have a plant pot that has a power socket in it. So the capacity of the plant that growing and absorbing carbon dioxide is the limitation of the energy that can be given to the appliance that plugged into it. So there we go. This is a kind of natural field in a nutshell. <clears throat> but how much can we give to the appliance? Uh, this is just a way to calculate how much carbon is in the, the tree or the plants. Basically, you have to microwave loads of plants and trees so to get, get rid of the water, and that's a calculation. From, yeah. So basically, you can calculate the carbon dioxide stored in the dry mass from that. But it turns out that, uh, say, if I have this big pot of plants, I can't even power one... Uh, small IKEA lamp. I need about five of them. How do we do that then? So <clears throat> coincidentally, at that time, we were working on another project called Patch Bay. Um, it is a <clears throat> kind of web service for things to share data, to talk to each other. It, one of the, it was one of the first platform for Internet of Things. So there we go. Why don't we just connect them all together? <clears throat> so. If you don't use your appliance, your unit can be a carbon sink for other people in the system. <clears throat> so it's kind of like a representation of this carbon footprint ecology, but in a very small scale. There's, there are only 20 people in this system. <clears throat> so, and kind of like other smart products, this natural fuels unit can take care of your plants by watering it. 
<coughs> and also you can pick uh, three of the appliances that come with the unit. You can pick a radio, a lamp, and a fan. They are bad qualities. <coughs> and um, on the unit, no, not that one. Yeah, that's a dial on the unit. <coughs> Instead of on and off, you can, if you want to be off, basically you just like be a carbon sink for the community. You can choose to be selfless. <coughs> and you will just use energy as much as the <coughs> system can provide you. Your lamp might be blinking all the time, but that's what it is. It's the, what the system can provide you. Oh, you can choose to be selfish. You will just use whatever energy that you want. You might break the system. Yeah. So the definition of a field is a sacrificial device to provide overcurrent protection, stress on sacrificial. Someone has to die. Something has to die, right? <clears throat> so you're probably wondering what happens if someone breaks a system. Each unit has three lives. And when someone breaks a system, it, one random unit lost one life. If it lost all three lives, it will be injected with the vinegar. That's the vinegar bottle at the, in the front. It is very efficient to kill plants. So I think it's important to stress that the fact that it is random because in this system, it's not about individual, it's about collective. You did something bad to the community, it's not that you will be suffer. Someone else will be suffer. Maybe it's your kid. <clears throat> I'm talking about carbon footprint in general. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we set up shops at a few, uh, many cities around the world. And, New York, in Spain, in Australia, in Korea. And um, at, at the shop, uh, the audience can come, or the user can come and adopt the unit. <laughs> and <clears throat> so it has been quite successful, I say. But uh, like I said, it was eight years ago. I don't remember much. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, it's, there were a few schools that adopted the unit. <laughs> and yeah, it's been great as an educational tool as well. So, fast forward eight years on, we have so many smart products now. We have a <clears throat> smart thermostat, we have a what that, what's that? smart light bulb, smart fridge, and even smart bed. They are all connected to internet somehow, talking to something else. <clears throat> and um, <laughs> I think in, in general, this smart products or even smart city, it's solely focused on efficient, making everything more efficient. But I don't think that makes us any smarter. It just, I don't know, to a certain extent, it just makes us dull. <clears throat> and um, at Umbrellium, we don't agree with that at all. We think that smart citizen is actually the way to go. We want to create a platform that not necessarily efficient, but somehow it's useful for smart citizen. It makes people collaborate, participate with each other to achieve greater things. And um, yeah, that's what we do at Umbrellium. <clears throat> we, uh, we have an upcoming project in the, in the north of England. I can't, I can't really say much about it right now, but. Uh, it's a communication tool in, in a town. It's not an efficient way of communicating at all, but the way we do it, we make people talk to each other because we heard that they don't talk to each other in this town. <laughs> <clears throat> so it's not about efficiency at all. It's about, I don't know, something else. Uh, it's for smart citizen. Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat>